Well, hello everyone. So, right now we're going to learn the new subtopic, which is the lymphatic system and also the body defense mechanism. So, what is the lymphatic system? How the mechanism works, and also why it is so important in our body. So, we will explain all of these to you guys for a better understanding. So, we're going to start with the formation and composition of interstitial fluid. So, we need to know that interstitial fluid is not the blood because the blood confines the blood vessels, but the interstitial fluid is like between and surrounds all the cells, capillaries, causes inter. So, inter is between. So here's the fact, you need to know that our body only consists of 5 liters of blood but 11 liters of inner tissue. Look at the diagram provided, you can see that there's the cells, there is blood capillary and you can see the blue color that surrounds the cells is actually the inner tissue fluid. So um, the inner tissue fluid will constantly bath all the cells. Here's an analogy, imagine that all the nutrients from the blood need to be transferred and diffused into the cells and also all the waste products from the cell need to be transferred into the blood to be taken away. So they need a medium. So in this case, the medium will be the interstitial fluid. So as you can see, the right side is the venous end and the left side is the arterial end. So the difference between these two parts of the capillary is because the pressure. Due to the very high pressure inside the arterial blood capillary, it will create the hydrostatic pressure. So hydrostatic pressure will push out with this, as you can see at the diagram, and cause the fluid to leak out. So, that's the question, that's the point. Where did all the fluid that leak out will go? So the answer is, it will diffuse into the lymph vessels and this fluid loss is returned to the blood through the lymphatic system at the venous end because the venous end has low pressure compared to the arterial end and inside the venous end, it will be hypertonic to the interstitial fluid. So all the water, mineral, salts and waste product will flow back into the capillary due to the osmotic pressure. Now I'm going to tell you also about lymphatic system mechanism. Okay, first of all, lymph is a colorless fluid that is found in lymphatic vessel. Lymph is similar in composition to blood plasma, but has not erythrocyte, fat, fat, or other protein molecules. Lymph contains high number of lymphocytes than blood. Contraction of surrounding skeletal muscle. Okay, next. Lymph flow in one direction only. One end of a vessel is closed. Back flow is prevented by the presence of the valve. The smaller lymphatic vessel join to form larger vessel. The vessel from the left side of the body, elementary canal, and the right side of the lower part of the body flow into the thoracic duct. Therefore, the thoracic duct is the largest lymphatic vessel in the body. It carries lymph to the left subclavian vein back into the bloodstream. The right lymphatic duct transports lymph from the right side of the head and chest into the right subclavian vein. The lymph nodes are mainly found at the neck, armpit and groins. The lymphatic system consists of a network of lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes and certain organs such as thymus gland, spleen and tonsils. Okay, before moving on to the next topic, we will discuss the role of the lymphatic system in the transport and also why it is so important in our body. So the main role of the lymphatic system is to return excess interstitial fluid back to the bloodstream. So why the lymphatic system is so important in our body because it helps to stabilize and maintain the composition of fluid balance in our body. I can tell you what will happen if the excess fluid is not returned to the bloodstream. So our body tissues will become swollen because of too much fluid accumulate. And the worst case scenario, it can cause a disease called as edema. So what is edema? Edema is basically a disease that happens when a parasitic round worm that lodge in the lymphatic vessels and prevent the limb from returning back to the bloodstream. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. As you all know, we have three lines of defense. So I'm going to talk about the first line of defense. 
uh, the first line of defense is a combination of physical and chemical barrier. So this combination uh, will prevent the pathogen from entering our body. So uh, I'm going to talk about the skin. Okay, skin. Uh, skin is a physical barrier which is impenetrable to virus and bacteria. Uh, skin also is a chemical barrier which secret sebum to protect over the skin. So, um, the acid and oil in the sebum prevent the growth of many microorganisms. So, and also, we secrete uh, sweat like the sweat uh, contain lysosome. The lysosome can break down the cell of certain bacteria. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the mucous membrane. Mucous membrane is the line of trachea, and it's secret mucus which contains lysosome. Lysosome will break down the bacteria. And other than that, we have tear saliva contain lysosome, uh, hydrochloric acid uh, secret in the stomach, uh, destroy the pathogen. Uh, and blood coating mechanism. Blood coating mechanism prevent the entry of pathogen by sealing the wound. Now we we'll talk about the second half defense. So what is second half defense? Second half defense is a non-specific resistance that destroys invaders in a generalized way without targeting any specific individuals. Second half defense involves pesticides like mephifils, monocytes, and microfilms. So what happens in second half defense? There is a process that complex synthesis to take part in the second half. There are two main types of phagocytes. First, neutrophils mostly found in blood, and macrophage mostly found at institution food. So what is the process of phagocytosis? This is the process of phagocytosis. Phagocytes is attracted by the chemical produced by the bacterium at the infected area. The phagocytes extends its volume towards the bacterium to engulf it. The ingestion of the bacterium will form a phagocytic phagosome, or it is called as phagosome. The bacterium inside the phagosomes will be destroyed by the lysocyte. Lastly, the phagocytes will release the digested product out from the cell. So, I think that's all in the second half defense. I'll pass to the third half. And I'm guys, it is time we arrive at the final conflict. You may not know it, but the body is engaged in a never ending battle. Sooner or later, a crowd is going to come along that's stronger than what the first and second responders can handle. When all the lucky senses have failed, it is time for the immune system to step in. And that's when stuff gets real the third line of defense system. Clearly, if the skin mucus membrane fails, we have the phagocytes. If phagocytes fail, we have to give up with the lymphocytes. There are two types of lymphocytes the T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. Now there are special cells in the lymphatic system and they have their own specific immunity. They originate from the bone marrow and from the bone marrow, they will migrate to the lymph node which you know are scattered throughout the body along the lymph vessel. And actually the lymphocytes will stay in the lymph node uh, and that's the place where they will mature and multiply. Now let's look at the antibodies produced by the B lymphocytes. Antibodies interact with antigens to make them harmless. They won't truly really be activated until they find their perfect enemy match, which means they only interact with one specific antigen. Before we proceed, what is antigen? In life, one of the first steps in any good defensive strategy is to be able to recognize a friend or a frenemy. And in the case of your immune system, it means being able to identify antigens. Uh, to defeat your enemy, you have to know your enemy. An antigen could be a foreign substance found on the surface of cells or a DNA cells within your own body. Now, the question is, how does antibodies provide protections against pathogens or infection? Well, now, let's look at the diagram. As we recall, antibodies are very, very specific. The diagram shows the mechanism involved to destroy antigens via antibody-antigen reaction. 
The first reaction or the first mechanism we call neutralization. In the process of neutralization, the antibody called antitoxins will bind to the toxin produced by the bacteria. To prevent the toxins from harming the body, the antitoxins produced by the lymphocytes will neutralize the toxins, making them harmless as they prevent the toxins molecules from attaching to a cell. The second way or in which antibodies inactivate antigen is through a process called agglutination. In this process, the lymphocytes produce antibody agglutinin, which causes clumping of antigen by binding to them. Now, this, this will help the phagocytes to easily capture and destroy the antigen. So, think of this word glue from the word agglutination. Imagine it's like a glue and it causes the antigen to stick together. And the third way in which antibody destroy antigen is through the process of opsonization. Okay, what happens here is that antibodies called opsonins bind to soluble antigens to act as markers so that antigens can be easily marked and engulfed by phagocytes. The phagocytes will move to the antigen and destroy them. And the last method actually and the last method is through lysis. Lysis means rupture. The lymphocytes produce the antibody called lysine, which causes the lysis or rupture of bacterial cells by breaking down the bacterial cell wall, and then the whole bacteria will burst. Now you can see all the different methods actually enhance phagocytosis. And I guess that's all from me. Thank you. Hi, do you meet the social gatherings and time spent in the crowded places? Please avoid close contact with someone who is sick. Don't forget to wash your hands often. Cough, sneeze, sneeze, and elbows. Your hands. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Hashtag stay at home. Hashtag stay safe. Hashtag perangi COVID. Hashtag stay safe. Hashtag let's start the good together. Until then, stay safe. Bye. If you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and have any questions about this topic, feel free to ask us at the comment section down below. Bye guys, see you again!